<laughs> Good. Gotta love the onions, homie. Gotta love the onions. What's yeah. up? What's up, man? Yeah. Oh, not much, man. It's just, uh, we're gonna give out the date now, so this is Freedom Fiends Live. It's Sunday, 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 September 30th. Are you fasting for Mitt Romney? So that no. he'll be blessed in the debates? Are people doing that? <laughs> yeah. I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to talk about politics, man. Screw politics. I'm just saying I ate a lot of food today, yo. I'm a, but I do I'm, every day, so. I'm a market libertarian and a political agnostic. Ah, all right. Yeah. So good news. Good news. So uh, I think you could actually turn down a tad. I think now that you got my, uh, I lent no. you my rack mount, my rack mount compressor, and I don't uh, wanna. You've, you've, all right, you've, I'll turn down a little bit. You've homesteaded it by changing the settings, so you think it's yours now. I mixed my labor with it. You so did eat that. You did. Yeah, it's this really incredible uh, piece of rack mount gear that is not made anymore. That has Russian tubes in it and makes Nima sound really good. Go ahead and yell and show how it doesn't distort. All right, uh, check it out. Yo! Ah! Holla, 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 holla. <laughs> was that loud? Yeah. Um, I, I wanted to wait till around the air to say this. I was teasing you about how you'll never be able to buy that for me. Um, since you like it, that is your early Christmas gift. Aww. I'm going to tear up, Michael. Thank you. Yep. I appreciate it. Yep. Just a little for Clemp Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> or don't whatever i don't care so uh <laughs> i guess it's our job to do the talking so so the Sorry. episode the episode today is called what's the difference between a libertarian and an anarchist and it's actually set up for a joke the answer is six months if you're paying attention <laughs> which somebody said to me after listening to me two and a half years ago the latest anarchy gumbo is me and you and dj like the week we met you with me being yeah. all, all statist. You're like, you're like, well, uh, you know, I, I don't think people should have uh, rocket propelled grenades um, or tanks. You know, the government shouldn't let them buy that. Yeah. And I'm like, whatever, statist. Yeah. Let's go shoot. Yeah. yeah. Screw that noise, man. No, it's uh, good, though, man. I mean, it's good to show growth. I mean, it's kind of embarrassing, but, you know, this is I, a teaching hospital, so I had to show my, my errors. Yeah, yeah. And you're obviously more transparent than Obama, like you always say. So he's hiding, right? He's hiding what he did a few years ago, man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he doesn't he want hides people everything. to see his grades. He, hide, he hides his... what he did this morning. Yeah. 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 So um, the image that we're going to use today, since we always talk about tranny hookers and crocodile <laughs> and junk food and guns on here, I actually found a picture of a tranny. All of those of combined. A, of a tranny open carrying a pistol at a church's chicken buying junk food. <laughs> yeah, I was like I was like, where is that? Popeyes? Oh, churches. It's even more ghetto than Popeyes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And yeah. churches I looked up, um, they're owned by a, a an Islamic um venture capital venture capital firm. So they yeah, all serve yeah. pork. Yeah. Although they changed their name recently, didn't they? They uh, were like uh yeah, they were, they, like, were they were like Crescent, Crescent Capital Moon. Investments, and now they're uh, R Capita, which sounds like an anarcho-capitalist investment firm, but I think but it's, it's actually means Arab. Arab yeah. Capita. Yeah. Capitia, yeah. yeah. I, I kind of like Crescent Capital. That sounds nice. Yeah. Yeah, but whatever. It's, the, it's their business. It's they can the do what they want. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, this, this tranny hooker, uh, she's pretty I'd awesome. Do her. I'd do her. <laughs> You'd do her? Really? Yeah. <laughs> After, you know, one or two after, years. After, after seeing the size of her gun. A line of cro crocodile. Well, <laughs> it's kind of deceptive because she she's making a common newbie gun mistake. Her uh, holster is too big for her gun. It is, yeah. At least it looks like it from the picture. I mean, I guess yeah. we didn't go. We didn't go inspect it. We didn't meet the tranny in person. But uh, and if people, you know, I wish you know, I wish I knew her name so we could stop calling her the tranny. I feel kind of, uh, I don't know. Well, we'll call her her out of respect, you know. Okay, fair enough. Fair but enough. Uh, I, if people want to know what I'm talking about, go on... Uh, on my Facebook page, it's the top picture. It's pretty awesome. It's from Vice Magazine for their do's yeah, and don'ts yeah. section. And it was a do. This was a do. And the caption says, can I get a super bucket of hot wings with a side of transsexual street justice? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Transsexual street justice. Should be the name of a band. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean... That's pretty badass, though. I, I like open carry pictures. I, I like to see that, especially this lady, because she's all well put together. You know, uh, she's got like an armband and some bangles, and she got her hair did, and some nice pimp sunglasses, and some high heels and anklets. Like she's got the whole package, and I feel like it's like looking at, um, you know, some kind of science fiction graphic novel. Like yeah. this is what Libair <laughs> looks like. You're, you're, you're about to order your chicken with voluntary transaction, and you got your gat on your hip. 
and nobody nobody pays any attention to it. Just oh, that's yeah. that's the normal state of being. Yeah, it, I think Libpair. A lot of people think it would be you know people talk trading and gold and wearing bow ties and talking about economics. I think it would look more like a <laughs> cross between this tranny hooker, uh, this black tranny hooker, open carrying and eating church's chicken, and like maybe El Neil Smith. Yeah, yeah, and Scott Beiser, <laughs> Beiser, Beiser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally, man. Looks cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it's good to point out that you know, anarchism or libertarianism, it doesn't have any kind of specific uh, vision on the way things should be. You know, culturally, it's just a, it's a political theory. It's a uh, about the morality of politics. It's not about you know, well, you know, people shouldn't dress this way or listen to this music. I mean, and I think you're right. I, th- I think it'd be more akin to the kinds of renegade freedom that people do in their everyday lives without even really thinking it through is is oh, i'm gonna be an anarcho-capitalist today and i'm gonna carry my gun just just people doing what they want to do and feeling free i think you would have something like this tranny in church's chicken with her gad on her hip i, I think you'd, you'd have more of that than than people in bow ties <laughs> but who knows the bow ties knows? would still be welcome i mean who's gonna buy the tranny hookers in gold coins you know yeah right right the guys in bow ties <laughs> <laughs> the guys in bow ties who are just aren't enough like who don't have enough swagger to just get it free get their tranny hookers and church's chicken free you know i mean i, I think it lived maybe, maybe it's just a convenience thing you know maybe they're on their way home they don't have time to go to a bar and pick up a chick so tranny hooker all right it's like, it's like fast food right it's yeah you know, if, if it were an, an incremental change to lib pair and there was a min pair on the way there, like a minarchist min paradise. Pair? <laughs> yeah. I think in min, pin, right. in min pair, this tranny uh-huh. hooker would be like endorsed by, by church's chicken. Like she'd eat free <laughs> just for being that cool during right, min, right, min pair. Right. Yeah. But yeah. then once lib pair happened, you know, she'd be a trendsetter and there'd be so many people, you know, even like straight chicks and straight guys copying her look that, uh, maybe there'd be a discount too for people who open carried in restaurants and grocery stores and places well, that could get robbed. That's in the min pair of, uh, of Moulin La Bay. It's you don't pay taxes if you're open carrying because you don't. Yeah, have but that's different because that that's still state enacted. And I know we are talking about min pair here, but you know that'd be nice. You know, right now a place like Churches or Luby's or wherever they're going to give a discount if you've worked for the state, right? Like if you're uh, a military veteran or something, they're going to give you more money, uh, f- not free, but they're going to give you a discount on your meal. Wouldn't it be nice if they gave a discount to people who might protect the Luby's or the Churches in the event of uh, an armed robbery? I swear somebody's done that once really? somewhere. Yeah, I remember Maybe. seeing a post. I bet, or I bet it's happened. I mean, stuff like that happens. Like, like the dude who was selling cars, ah, some southern giving, state giving was away giving, an, giving AK. an AK. Yeah, that's happened yeah, exactly. more than one place. That's happened a couple yeah. of times that I know of. Yeah, that's pretty awesome, man. Hey, that that, you, that 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 might be the deal breaker for me. You know, you're in Wyoming when the guy who is going to help you with Linux support postpones because he has to go rescue a horse. <laughs> that happened to me yesterday. Nice. Yeah, a horse comes first in, in Wyoming. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of places have horses. Was, but was it a wild horse? No, nah, it was uh, a friend. Of, like his neighbor runs a big animal rescue, and one of the horses had gotten out and injured itself, and they'd had to go Aww. get it. It's it's okay now. It's okay, but you know, okay. we had to cancel yeah. our Linux support. Uh, thing and a lot of right. places have horses but wyoming seems from my experience to have a lot of pe- horse people who are also linux people i don't know if that'd be true hmm. in like west virginia or oklahoma and if i'm wrong and you're a linux user and a horse owner in west virginia or oklahoma call in i want to give the number yeah. out if yeah, you're listening to this live out. on uh september 30th 30th 2012 Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. And if you are listening to live, you can call us at 307-215-5171. Again, 307-215-5171. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we added another show this week. We're doing a a show on Thursdays on Adam Curry's uh, No No Agenda Agenda Global Global Radio. Radio. And it's called, our show's called The Fiends Agenda, The Freedom Fiends Agenda, of course. (laughs) It's like, right, right. You may have no agenda, but we got agenda. It's like, wait, yeah, your network's called No Agenda? Okay, our show must be called Our Agenda. Yeah, and it's uh, Thursdays from 3.30 to 5.30 East Coast U.S. time. It's a calling show, same calling number. And uh, yeah, you start talking about that and the Central Scrutinizer just plays you out, I guess. Mm -hmm, I'm mm -hmm. kidding. It's like the wrap it up B. (laughs) Yep. No, we got plenty more. Uh, I guess we got tranny hookers and crocodile out of the way. So uh, other lib pair fantasies coming up. And realities. Sure. Worms. 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 Worms.
Want to search porn in private? Or maybe you just want to talk to your friends without some tech goon hired off a pizza box snooping through your private thoughts. MetroPipe VPN is a secure computing service operated by privacy-loving anarcho-capitalists. Accounts can be had for as little as $7.50 a month. They take Bitcoin, don't keep any logs, and hate nanny intrusions as much as you do. Get a 25% discount by going to metropipe.net slash fiends. That's metropipe.net slash fiends. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. Basic Handgun and Rifle with Jared Waltz. First rule of being alive is you own yourself. A groundbreaking approach to firearms and self-defense training. Beautifully filmed and easy to understand instructions make this one a must-have. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. New DVD from Michael W. Dean. Available on Amazon. Your house is property. Yo. Uh, what's up? Yo. Yep, yep. This yo, yo, yo. Pray yo, yo, ma. Yo, yo, ma. Yo, yo, ma. Yeah. Is that the violinist or is he a cello player? I forget. I don't know. Someone Some kind of wooden stringed grandpa's guitar. Grandpa's guitar. So we've had a uh, massive, massive throughput this month. We've really increased our... Uh, Increased our capital of podcasting. Yes. We're up to. Let me check it right now. We're our up cultural to, capital. Um, seventy-two thousand episode downloads this month. Wow! In one yeah. month. Yeah. That's nice. Nice. Yeah. With about six thousand yeah. unique users, so they're each downloading like more than ten episodes each. Yeah. Or yeah. somebody's downloading a lot more. I don't know. I don't know how it works. Okay. Okay. Yep. Hey, what's the score? So, uh, you know, I've been complaining a lot about this. They're gonna, they're voting in my town, in my county, to raise the sales tax one cent for two years to build a new library. Ah, uh-huh, to build uh-huh. a new they library. call it, they don't they call it something like the voluntary one tax? Yeah. yeah. And Is that it? Is that the word they use? Voluntary? Yeah. Well, they already have uh-huh. a voluntary one cent tax that they've had for ten years or something, and they said oh, this, so this one will expire one. in two years. But you know, oh, right, right, right. I think they have to renew two it. Years, they'll say, mm-hmm. yeah, and. The money, they actually had money left over from their one cent stealing this year and gave it to a bunch of charities. Like, look at what the city council did. They're so generous. Yeah, it's like, why not give it back to the people you took it from in the first place? I know. I know. <laughs> if they were smart. I remember reporting on that, though, and it's it's not very voluntary because I don't think it's ever, I think it's been voted down once in its history of, like, decades. Like, yeah. four, dec- four or five decades. Oh, has it been going that long? It's been, I think, since the 70s, yeah. Yeah, and um, oh yeah, it was in 2008. And on the website for the new library, it, it has a uh-huh. um, voters' question section, and there's three questions, and none of them are like, you know, what gives you the moral right to do this. But one of them is, <laughs> if voters said no in 2008, why is the new library on the ballot again? Answer: hmm. Over 15,000 voters said yes in 2008 as well. Out of like what? How many people <laughs> live in this county? Like 100,000 or 70,000 or something. So you know, a sliver of them said yes. Since then, the need for a larger library has only increased. In 2008, the library board heard the voters' concerns for previous size and cost. As such, the board has reduced the size and cost, worked hard to give citizens a voice in the decision. And is presenting a very different project to voters. In 2009, private funds were raised to buy the property, also reducing the impact on taxpayers. We'll do that uh, again. Yeah, do that again. I'd say if the free market really needs this, uh, it, you know, at, put, up, put up ads everywhere in the library. Well, here's the other thing. I mean, they it irks me so much how they call it the voluntary one cent tax. If it there's no such thing as a voluntary tax. That that is a complete misnomer. If something is voluntarily given to you, it's not a tax, it's a donation. Well, some people so say if you that really the- wanted to do it and call it voluntary, you could uh, you know, ask people, "Hey, uh, this is your name. Do you want to give more money?" You know, kind of like at There is the, a voluntary the bottom- tax. The lottery is a voluntary tax. Because well, I don't uh, call it a tax then. It, well, it's a voluntary a revenue creator for the okay, government, but it's okay. not a tax. Some people call it a tax on the mathematically uh, ignorant. A tax on but, the stupid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, the thing about it is it's not voluntary because if you vote no, and I'm sure the, the same people who live in Casper who voted no in 2008, voted no in 2004, voted no in 2000, on back to when it first started. 
uh, those people still have to end up paying that extra that extra one cent. I love on that they dollar. say they worked hard to give citizens a voice in the decision. Like we're going to do this to you no matter what, but we'll have a couple meetings and let you get up and bitch about it. Yeah, exactly. Because like 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 Ben Stone's old thing about how if if two people mugged you and had a debate on what they should buy with the money and included you in the process. Yeah, what do you and think it, we should buy with the money we stole from you. And it what really feels think? like they're going to go ahead with this no matter what. You know, I'm wondering like what would happen oh, yeah. if it's voted down. They'll probably just fake the ballots, or I don't know what they do. They probably just raise property taxes because it seems like I mean they have the blueprints, they have the plan, they have the location. That's a good uh, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do feel like they'll get it one way or the other. Either yeah, either through this, and if this doesn't work, they'll be like, well, we couldn't do the one cent tax, so we're gonna have to do this other thing, and it doesn't require you know uh, a referendum. We'll just uh, do it some other way where we can hide our tracks. Yeah, and I really doubt if this tax is voted in, it's gonna disappear in two years. They're gonna find something else that needs doing. No, like I said, it every year it it comes back again and, and again. And they again. spend public money advertising it. You know, I've said I really think if some like minarchist with a with with a lot of time on his hands and energy wanted a good lawsuit, I think an interesting lawsuit would be suing the county to demand that an equal amount of public funds be given to advertising against this. Even then, though, I mean that that suffers from all the problems of the government intervention. Who who gets I'm, that other fifty percent? I know you're man. Shut up. Shut up! Why, why do I know? Why do I gotta shut up? No, because you're because no. you're saying, well, that's that's. Are you saying that that's immoral? I'm not saying it's immoral. I'm saying it it's not effective. I mean, you no, I just think it'd be a good fu. I would love to see someone do that. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying okay. I'm not saying it would solve anything. I'm saying it would be yeah, good yeah. theater, man. It 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 would it would expose the stupidity. You know, something Ben Quaker said recently that I really. I'm sorry, I said shut up. So I said, shut up. I just, I went to like, no, no, no. Okay, Conflict come on, is man. the essence of drama. Yeah. 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 Fight. Ben Quaker Go. made a really good point recently. He said that, um, that any kind of public protest, you know, like poke the bear police type stuff, uh, mm -hmm. you know, public rallies, standing up and, and giving a speech at the city council meeting. Um, he said that the only purpose of that, the only thing that that accomplishes is, uh, letting other victims of the tyranny, you know, commiserate with you, which is a valuable thing. But he said it has yeah. absolutely no value in convincing the master to be less oppressive. And I'm sure people could think mm -hmm. of like examples where something was changed, uh, but it, it's a it's a system where you poke one end and it comes out some other other place. You know, and uh, getting getting the master to let up on one little thing doesn't stop the master from controlling you and. And controlling right. everybody and wanting to, you know. Right, right, right. A plantation o owner who treats you better than the plantation down the road doesn't make him any more morally right. Uh, and and I think Ben's right on that. That you know, <laughs> convincing the master is not a way to uh, effectively win your freedom ever, because it's completely against the master's best interest. Uh, I think a, a more appropriate tactic would be to convince all of the slaves that the master is illegitimate. Well, yeah, reducing the demand for a tyranny, which uh, is what you and I, you know, that that's what we're doing. What? Spending this yeah. beautiful Sunday, you know, I was out gardening today. I was putting away the the dead plants for the winter and digging up pots and, uh, you know, doing yard work and loving it. And I'd love to be out doing that, but I'm loving this too. Instead, I'm spending this beautiful, you know, cool, sunny Sunday afternoon inside staring out a window at the trees, yakking about freedom. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's still good times. And you know, it's also Larkin Rose's uh tiny dot thing. I mean, <laughs> the master really, uh, his power all rests on the masses that carry him up. Here, I'm going to pull know. a Scott Horton here. And, you know, since we're making this sacrifice, if you want to make a donation, you all <laughs> could go over to freedomfiends.com and click on the spinning coin and make a donation or buy some buttons. Mm. Wasn't self-deprecating -deprec enough to be Scott Horton? <laughs> I, I almost said self-defecating. <laughs> I don't, don't mean that at all, Scott. I meant uh, deprecating. Scott's awesome. He is. He is. Yeah. Yep. Even if he doesn't always say so. But, yeah, Scott, you're awesome. Yeah. You're going to go skateboarding with him, right? He doesn't Maybe, know it one yet, day. but yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. I didn't know you skate. I used to. I can. I have a board. Worms.
Ugh, I'm so sick of looking at Steve's wedding pics, and I'm all out of passive-aggressive comments. What else am I supposed to do at work all day? Sick of stalking your ex on Facebook? Yeah! Are you all out of cute cats and autocorrect mishaps to lol at? Duh! Freedom Fiends to the rescue! The Fiends now have a blog. Read all about the latest tyranny today. Dream about lip pair. Laugh while Western civilization collapses. Just click on the cat icon to the right of freedomfiends.com. Freedom Fiends blog. Read it! Want to contribute to Liberty but short on cash? You can help the Freedom Fiends without even spending a post-1964 dime. Download uTorrent and start seeding Fiends episodes. Follow twitter.com slash fiendtorrents to grab the past episodes and new ones as they post. Leave your computer on seeding the torrents while you're at work or asleep. The more people seeding the Fiends, the more drone-proof we'll be when the boot comes down. That's twitter.com slash fiendtorrents. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're listening to the rebroadcast on the Freedom Fiends link, we just got an email from uh, Stephen who said that uh, it's flanging when the LRN audio comes in. Basically, music, MP3s, rebroad, streaming MP3, rebroadcast as an MP3, is going to sound bad. So um, you, you might hit refresh on your browser. That might help. Or stop and start whatever program you're listening to the feed in, but uh, or you can just go over the LRN feed and listen; and it'll sound better. We just we just rebroadcast on the on the Fiends streaming feed for people that don't know that there's uh, right. you know several different places that we do stuff. So yeah, I mean uh-huh. it's it's a pretty simple uh, I guess patch that we do. We just rebroadcast directly. I, I plug an input. I plug the headphone input into the microphone or the head. Headphone output into the microphone input of another computer that's just running the LRN feed, and then I broadcast that using butt. And it's a 64 kbps uh, bit rate, so it's not the highest quality. And plus, we're basically rebroadcasting as, as sort of a copy of a copy of. Well, a yeah, like rate. a 64k rebroadcast at 64k is going to be like a 32, you know, uh, yeah, 32k yeah. or less. Yeah, so we do apologize. Um, you know, yeah, the, the audio quality is better if you go to the LRN streaming server. Um, you know, I, I still think we should do the simulcast, though, and rebroadcast. Yeah. So so we don't run into the problem of people calling in and be like, hey, you were talking about, you know, <laughs> tranny hookers and crocodiles. And we were like, no, 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 we were talking about. Um, tranny hookers and guns and church's chicken. Yeah. You're listening exactly. to an old episode. Man, I right. just keep staring at this. Pit. I want to do this tranny hooker. I want to smoke crocodile, crocodile. Dude, yeah. I forgot to tell you that in that documentary, Last Days Here, I think it was called, or last, uh-huh. what was it about the aging rocker? He has like crocodile arm uh, in early in one scene where he smoked a lot of crack and shooting dope and like picking at scabs on his arm. Uh, and he thinks there's hmm. bugs under his skin. They show his arm uh-huh. and he's like, just come back from the hospital. You know, he's got a dressing on it. He's got the hospital wristband on. I mean, mm-hmm. you can see like into his muscle, not quite into Gross. the bone because he lives with his parents and he's probably it got, you know, health insurance or something. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, see, I hate needles and I'm thankful for that because I don't think I could ever be a, a heroin addict because I just I pass out if, if I give blood or if somebody does a blood test on me. I just Pussy. hate things being in my veins. Pussy. Maybe, maybe, but whatever. I mean, I've, it works I've for gra- me. Because I, I have kind of an addictive personality and I like drugs a lot, but, you know, I wouldn't want to do that. I never, all, I never minded needles. They were, you know, Ugh. I didn't have the fetish of the needle like some people do, but uh, I didn't mind it. Although I love picking scabs, so Ew. maybe 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 if I could get over that crocodile would be fun. I don't know. You know, there was a singer, <laughs> a punk rocker in some band. Who, his name was Rat Scabies. I think that's an awesome name. Rat Scabies. Yeah, yeah. There was also that cool band called the Scabs, and you showed me their uh, record, and it was scab colored. Well, that was my band, the Rolling Scabs. The scabs, the Rolling Scabs. I thought it was like some little teenagers. It was. It was. It was. I created the, the Rolling Scabs. Yeah, they had the song "My Mom Smokes Pot." Uh, so it wasn't your band. You were just the producer. Well, here's difference. what it was, okay? There were these two kids, Jacob and Giuliano. Um, one of them's dead now. Uh, Giuliano fell down an elevator shaft in an abandoned building oh, while playing. Um, but uh, Jacob is, you know, probably 30-something uh, medical marijuana grower in uh, oh, okay. California. I tried to get him to be in the movie, but, like, he was too flaky. Um, mm, like a scab. Be- yeah. <laughs> so I was, I was living with these people my girlfriend and i in about 1980 uh four no 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 like 89 my girlfriend and i were homeless we were crashing with some friends at their house and uh 
we were screwing in the living room while everyone else was out of the house and we woke up yeah. and there were these two like young boys like 11 years old looking in the window they climbed up on the roof and they were looking at us through the window watching us screw on the on the floor were, were you like putting on a good show for them or were you like no stop stop i can't work under pressure or, oh how, no you man i got up and like yelled at him and closed the shade and uh then mm. went back to mm. it no man. Went, i, I would have tried to charge him i'd have been like that'll be uh twenty dollars no i don't think commerce. i'm i don't think i'm lip hair <laughs> enough to think that i could charge minors for a live sex young minors for a live sex show nema mm. okay it was Fine. San Francisco. I guess, I guess everybody has their limits. I think they teach that in high school in San Francisco. But <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, and they would prank us and stuff. Like they stuck a potato in the uh, exhaust of my van, you know, so it filled up with that's a that's toxic, a dick move. dangerous. Yeah, but finally, like we we wanted to stop them from messing with us, me and the people I was crashing with. So uh-huh. we invited them up, and we had a bunch of musical equipment there, and uh, we let them play it. And one of them was banging on the drums and the other was on the microphone yelling and he like picked up the newspaper and started to read the headlines and make fun of them. And All I was right. like, and I kind of like what we do. <laughs> yeah. My, my roommate picked up a guitar and he couldn't really play. And I picked up a bass and I could play. And, uh, and it was, we liked it, you know, and, and it sounded good. And I called up Tim Yohannan from Maximum Rock and Roll Magazine, who was alive then and was the booking agent at uh, Gilman Street Project. I was like, Tim, this is Michael from Bomb. How you doing? He's like, what's up? And I'm like, I got this new band called, uh, we don't have a name yet, but it's these two 11-year-old kids. Here, listen, we'll play for you live over the phone. And we did. And I picked it back up and he's like, can you guys play Thursday? We had a cancellation. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, you're the opening <laughs> band going on at 710 or something. And we're like, cool. And like one of them <laughs> couldn't get away, you know, like had to sneak out to do it. And uh, we took him over there and we wrote. On the way over there, this girl that lived with me was like, we need to make a set list. So, you know, at least have song titles to work from. So we made up one and there was like, you know, my mom smokes pot, M&M's on my Tonka toys. Uh, I forget the rest of them, but we had the set list and like me and the drummer from Bomb played kind of a, just grew, a groove and two guitar players who couldn't play played over it and the two kids just screamed and it was great i'll put yeah. uh i'll put my one of smokes pot is actually a pretty dope song yeah i'll put it at the end of this episode on the archive maybe i'll do a dubstep remix of it <laughs> that would be fun yeah my mom smokes pot gets high every day my mom smokes <laughs> pot falls asleep on her bed all she ever <laughs> thinks about lighting that cigarette lighting that cigarette my mom smokes pot <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 good art man good art it was, it was and uh yeah and we we actually practiced and got a little better and like you know had set songs and uh they somebody released an album from like our fifth or sixth show my friend little mike recorded it on cassette from the board and released it uh it's the rolling scabs live at gilman street it's no, no, a seven no, no, like piece. cassette or like tape like reel to reel like you were explaining to me okay that record was recorded on a cassette tape it was a cassette plugged into the board so it sounded as good as it could but yeah was it like that cassette you were telling me about that actually records on the whole length of the tape no it was a cassette stereo tape it was oh wow that's punk rock man pressing vinyl from cassette yeah that's punk rock yeah yeah apparently yeah i'm so glad we don't have to do that stuff anymore i know just turn on your computer and worry about all that crap yeah, tape. I was Buying I was giving tape, I was giving Adam Curry some uh, some tech advice today on how to use Mumble because he's trying it and having problems with it. So I I told him I sent him my screenshots and or asked if he wanted them and he said yeah for the settings we we have painstakingly yeah. discovered that work and uh, and at the end of it I was like P.S. Thank you for inventing podcasting. It changed my life. <laughs> <laughs> which which you said sounds yeah. like a letter to the little boy to Santa Claus or the president. Yeah, or something. yeah. Thank yeah. you for yeah. yeah. But I meant it. I meant it. <laughs> Letter to the president. Yeah. <laughs> Thank with you pot, for all pot. my mom's welfare money. <laughs> I wouldn't get my American cheese slices without it. <laughs> Thank you for my dad's welfare money. Without it, he wouldn't be able to afford a too big holster and some high heels and some church's <laughs> chicken. <laughs> A tranny hooker's son. I don't letter know, man. to the president. Somehow I, yeah. I would hope that that tranny hooker. That that should be the name of the welfare. episode now. A, a tranny hooker's son's letter to the president. <laughs> that, that that's the new episode. How about now. a tranny hooker in every pot? In every pot, I don't know, man. Cannibalism and transsexuality. Uh, okay, a tranny hooker's son's, a tranny hooker's child's letter to the president. 
Yeah, that's that's what I just said, man. He said son. <laughs> I said son. Okay, why childs? You want to take the sexism out of the transsexual? No, because it sounds more like a child's letter to child. God. Yeah, think there was of a, the children. There was a book won't, called, you, yeah. won't you please think of the transsexual's That's children? That's why. Yes, <laughs> a tranny hooker's child's letter to the president. Yes. But then that's yes. not going to really work with the picture because it's not the child, it's the tranny hooker. But. Mm-hmm. Mm. Huh. Yeah, I don't know. Do they have to match? I don't think they have to match. No, no. I mean, you call it whatever you want to. You do anyway. I do anyway. I just, yeah, yeah. I'm a tyrant with naming these episodes. No, 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 man. No. You just homestead it. I You're the one it. who actually makes the blog post. So. Yeah, 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 exactly. We're not saying the Freedom Fiends are the one true path to anarchist liberation, but it's a good one. If you want to put your voluntarist money where your mouth is, consider making a donation to the Freedom Fiends. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the spinning coin on any post. Then make a one-time gift via PayPal or set up a monthly contribution of as little as $3. Giving to the Freedom Fiends helps advance education of horizontal liberation throughout the world. The Freedom Fiends. We work hard, so send us some money. He's live, yo. And yo. This, this is a call-in show, so you guys yo. can call in. If you want to change the subject, you know, if you're sick of hearing about tranny hookers and you want to hear about something like, I don't know, heterosexual female hookers or uh, homosexual male hookers that aren't transsexual, you know, those are all ki- kinds of subjects that we can talk about here. Yeah. Yeah. So I got a, um, you got to turn down a little bit. I think you're a little louder than me. I think you got the compressor output up a little bit. Just turn it down a nun's cunt here, man. Nun's cunt here. Yeah, that. That's how this compressor works, man. A nun's cut hair is like a world of difference. Although, uh, I don't know if you should use that expression anymore, because I think a nun's cut hair would be a little bit longer than, say, yeah, I don't know, a uh, high school girl's cut hair. <laughs> well, what is it with you and underage women, children, and sex today, man? What do you mean? High school <laughs> girls can be of age. Okay. Haven't you, you seen, haven't you seen Barely 18? That's one of the best Hustler franchises ever. I don't know what that is. That would offend right, my virgin sensibilities. I guess. I, I found the scab, scab colored vinyl picture. I want to post it. Oh, okay. Score, yeah. score. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I hate my teacher was one of the songs, and around the world in eighty seconds. Ah. Yeah. How does how does I hate my teacher go? <laughs> I don't know. We'll we'll find out eventually. Okay. Play it. <laughs> so um, you said that the the compressor I sent you has cat pictures all over it, stickers. It's got random stickers. It's very Michael Dean, this this little piece of memorabilia. I'm going to no. sell it to the museum if you ever die. No, you got to keep it. That's a better museum, man. I hate museums. I like I like things being used. That was something yeah, my mother right. taught me. You know, like we lived in a house full of antiques and oriental rugs because she owned a store and she'd bring them home when the store was closed in the winter. But uh, you were allowed to walk on them. You know, it like it was my house was like a museum, but you could use everything in it, which she taught me is what you do. You know, you walk on oriental rugs. Yeah. You don't. Well, I guess they were Iranian rugs, but they called them Iranian. They were Persian rugs, a lot of them. Yeah, (laughs) I grew up with a Persian rug in my bedroom. You you grew up with a Persian in your bedroom. I am a Persian. (laughs) You always have. I'm always. I'm I'm, I'm usually in my bedroom. Yeah. 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 So um. Yeah, we had some nice Persian rugs growing up. I mean, Persians like Persian rugs as much as the next fella. (laughs) I have another cat cat gift story. Um, you. You and your wife gave me gave us a really cute gift for Christmas. It was, and it was kind of like we're hard to buy for. It's kind of like, what do you get for for the people that have everything they want? You know, uh, yeah. You, you found us something we didn't have that we really liked, which was um, sushi shaped cat toys with catnip in them. Yes, yes, and it and, comes in a little tray, just like sushi from the store, <laughs> from the sushi bar. And uh, as usual with our cats, they you know play with new toys for a while. They played with those longer than they usually play with toys, but then they forgot about them. But the other day, Peanut rediscovered one of them and played with it for like an, an hour. And I finally noticed what he was doing. I heard him in the other room, and then I went in there, and I was like, I was going to videotape it for you, but then he stopped as soon as I pulled out the uh, camera. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, Peanut seems camera shy, or at least he must be. Because He's people all shy. Your, <laughs> well, all of your cat pictures are always a fuzzy. Yeah, like, like pe- people who don't know might, might might think that Fuzzy is the only cat you have. Yeah, pe- well, Fuzzy's more photogenic too. Uh, Peanut yeah. looks beautiful in real life, but pictures of me kind of looks like 
awkward and alien sometimes. He has gold right, colored right. eyes, which is really weird, and he's often. Well, I, I think it's because he's a spaz, and he probably <laughs> acts retarded when when you point anything at him, like yeah. a camera. Yeah. No offense, yeah. Peanut. I'm not hating. Yeah. So um, yeah. stuff. So robot stuff. police drones could put disabled cops back on the beat. You read that? Uh, no, I read the headline, man. I assumed what it was. Is that just the fact that they're going to give officers who are on disability, they're going to, you know, give them a computer password so they can go control the drones from their home? Yeah. And think about yeah. it, too. Like, a lot of cops who are disabled in the line of duty are disabled because they were shot. So think about the, the chip on the, the shoulder. Vengeance. The vengeance. Yeah. Like, cops that, that feel they've been wronged by the populace and... You know, have an attitude, may have an attitude of, you know, I'm at war with those scumbags and those scumbags Ugh. are everywhere. They're going to give those guys drones, which for now are going to be surveillance only, which everyone thinks is friendly and cool. But, you know, it's not. And secondly, within five years, they're going to be armed. Someone's going to they're going to do it. Texas will do it. And they already have. Yeah. drones. Yeah. Yeah. I fear you're right. Um, I hope you're not. But I fear you are. I mean, you're right. Yeah, and they'll it's, use it. They'll use it. You know, they won't be armed with a Hellfire missile. They'll probably be armed with a rifle, and they'll probably one use of those, it. One of those less than lethal, quote unquote, devices that yeah, they are probably, fond of using. Probably a rifle, but you know, they'll probably use it first in a way that nobody could argue with, or no one, not not many people argue with. Like you know, someone will have like a a baby hostage with a gun to its head, and they'll just fly the drone over and like take out the guy, and everyone will applaud. Mm -hmm. And then they'll start doing it to, you know, the, the the weed dealer on the corner or the crack dealer on the corner. Wow. Well, uh, I'm looking at the article now, and it's not uh, it's not just the drones that you would think about. It's also this thing that is actually a two-wheeled prototype telebot. It's on, uh, it's on two wheels. They call it the Urban Warrior Robot. Uh, <laughs> and uh, get this, according to the article on Yahoo, it can, it can see, hear, speak remotely, but also perform unique actions like printing tickets. <laughs> so it, it'll, it'll pretty much be like Dude, Robocop. It's Demolition meet, Man. Yeah, it's it's Demolition Robocop meets man. Demolition Man. <laughs> when you cuss, you'll, the, the thing, will, the nearest one, it'll will just find you automatically. You. A receipt it, will just print out of its chest and dock you credits because there'll be no money. <laughs> yeah, right, right. You have been fined seventy-five credits, man. Yeah. I, I would, uh, I would that? homestead that. I would, I would homestead that robot. <laughs> I, w I would make a few modifications, like removing <laughs> all the viable pieces of equipment that made it work. And then it becomes yours. You can tell the judge that. Yeah, I homesteaded yeah, it. It's yeah, I homesteaded now. it. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, there's a new That'll show. Work. Speaking of cops. And, and if it doesn't work, I'll just say, hey, hey, your flag has gold trim around it. I don't believe you anyway. <laughs> this is a court of admiralty. <laughs> uh, there's a fleur de lis at the top of that flag. Yeah. Um, and I have Mark Stevens representing me in court. All right, no beef, no beef, Michael. This is a chicken only podcast. All right, so uh, speaking of fried beef and chicken, um, you know, I mean, I think statists are like people that would basically, you know, go into a a, a Cajun restaurant and complain that the fish is burnt. That's my feeling. <laughs> uh, bastards, man! Black and fish is so good. Well, what makes you say that though? Did you did you go to like Popeyes recently? No, nah, it's just something I thought of. I was watching this show the other day called Treme or Tremi. Trem Treme. It's a new HBO movie. It's a pretty show. It's pretty good. It's about New Orleans after post Katrina. Like uh. now that now it's up to the current one is up to like 2007. Uh, and people in New Orleans really like this show. It's very accurate. And a lot of people feel it's the representation of New Orleans that they've always been due, but never had. And it's like I've people in, in Portland, like Portlandia. Yeah. I've been to New okay. Orleans a lot. I mean, this is not comedy though. It's more accurate. Uh, you know, less like send ups and more how it is. Um, I've been in New Orleans a bunch. I dated a girl that lived there, and I used to go see her a lot. And uh, it's pretty accurate, man. And it, I mean, you know, the the basic things it has in this in the show are like great music, great food, corrupt cops, FEMA, and you know, that's that's New Orleans. Yeah. First time in my adult life that something besides the government violated the non-aggression principle against me was in New Orleans. What was it? Uh, we drove there for my roommate's 21st birthday party. You know, it's it's like a nine-hour drive from Austin, I think. So we drove there for the weekend. Uh, we parked our car. It was my car. I was the driver. I, throughout college, I was always, like, the driver. Um, and so we parked in a parking lot, one of the many in New Orleans near all the hotel district, and it had, like, a fence around it. You know, a nice, tall, 
tall gate too and a nice big fence and i was like oh that looks safe you know i'm willing to pay the money here um and then we went and partied, like, you know, snorting coke off of toilet bowls, all that good stuff, uh, for, for the weekend. Was that the, back, tranny, the tranny hooker's name was Toilet Bowl? Yeah, that's, her, that's the tranny hooker's name. Yeah, well, we had a good old time. You know, we did it. We enjoyed uh, New Orleans for what it was and, and the beautiful fact that you can just get a 44-ounce a uh, styrofoam cup full of Jack Daniels and ice, you know, at the gas station on the corner. On the corner. Um I had a great time, come back, and my car has been, like, busted into. Like, window broke out, crackheads apparently got in, stole, you know, everything that was visible, um, you know, because we, we were dumb. How you know, old were, were you? Young. Uh, 19? No, you, you no I, was, you, I was 21. You this was after I was 21. You weren't aggressed against by anyone but the government until you were 21? Man, as I said in my adult life. So I mean, in, oh. in like middle school and high school, you know, like little kid fights. But I think I got little it. kid fights are different because it, and when you're a kid and you're in a little kid fight, you like fight back and you like agree to the fight. And you're like, OK, I'm going to fight Kirby in the bathroom at, you know, after school or after third period. I got know? mugged. Uh, in New, I got mugged in New Orleans. <laughs> that's did you? that's a little more aggressive. Even well, yeah, these 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 motherfuckers, though, I, they, they not only took all my CDs, they were they were so bummy. Did they take they a opened dump? up. <laughs> No, but they opened up the ashtray and they took all like the cigarette butts and cigar butts out of my ashtray. That's how that's how bummy these people were. They 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 looked for stogies in my ashtray after they stole my CDs. They sent like this crime investigation unit there and they did nothing. You know, they they, they came and looked at the car and wrote a, a report and went away. Nothing resolved. Lost all my CDs. It was awful. So, um, well, cool. I still love um, New Orleans though. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell the New Orleans story I started when we come back from selling things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not saying you interrupted me, just I want to remember to come back to it. It was good. It was a good interruption. Yeah. It was good. Conflict, man. It's good. Mm. Have you swallowed too much of the state's poison? The Freedom Fiends will stick their fingers down your throat and hold your hair back while you hurl. Check out the new show, The Freedom Fiends Agenda, on Adam Curry's No Agenda Global Radio. Streaming live every Thursday from 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. East Coast U.S. time. The Freedom Fiends agenda is Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati's fun and feisty chat about market anarchy, self-defense, real money, the digital police state, activism, DIY media, sex pets, and rock and roll. Call in soon before they get droned. Live studio number 307-215-5171 or via Skype to username kittyfeet1. Listen live at nagradio.com. That's nagradio.com. The Freedom Fiends from freedomfiends.com. What does freedom mean? Tune in to lrn.fm to find out. lrn.fm is the Liberty Radio Network a collection of live talk radio and podcasts, all coming from a principled pro-liberty perspective. LRN.FM show hosts aren't left, right, or conspiracy kooks. You can tune in 24-7 to LRN.FM via your phone, computer, satellite, and more. Listen free anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Yeah. Beans. Yep. All right. There we go. Okay. Okay. Now we get that nice little fade out. We can start talking about stuff again. Feening it up big time. If you want to call us, you can do that. That's uh, 307-215-5171. Again, 307-215-5171. I think, Michael, you wanted to finish your uh, New Orleans story, or did you want to move on to bigger and better things? It sounds like you're eating chicken. No, man. Carrots. No, no. Carrots. Carrots. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. that. That's what counts for snacks around this house now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, man, carrots yeah. are good. I love carrots. Yeah, I, I want to finish my day. story that you rudely interrupted. No, you cool. Well, inter- you you, you interrupted, interrupted with your story, or, and then I interrupted you. So it was. What were we talking about when you, man? Don't make me man. punch you. Don't man. make me send Adam Curry over there in his limo to punch you. <laughs> I think the limo driver would probably do the punching. Uh, and Adam would be chilling in the back. I don't know. He's always been kind of hands on too, so I don't know. Um, That's true. So in this show, Tremé, Tremé, uh, which is a Tremé. neighborhood in New Orleans. Um, yeah, there's this scene where 
street musicians having a jazz funeral for their friend who was a jazz musician, which is a really long tradition in that town. It's, it's I've seen one. It's an awesome thing to see. You know, they play really sad, mournful jazz music marching to the graveyard. They bury the person and then they bust out, leaving the graveyard, playing really upbeat party jazz music. It's cool. Huh. Huh, cool send that is off. cool. That's cool. In this show, in this episode, the cops arrested them for doing this. And uh, it became a big to-do, which could totally happen. New Orleans has some of the most yeah. corrupt, effed up cops in the country. Um, yeah. You know, th- that was where the cops were shooting people in Katrina in the back, you know. Yeah. For no yeah. reason. For yeah. not even looting. Just because just they reason. wanted to. Because they're yeah. cops. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, in this, at the end, you know, like the newspapers get get wind of it and do a big story on it and the cops get embarrassed. And so at the end of it, they decide to have, to have another memorial for their friend anyway, like regardless of whether the cops come and the cops show up and they're like, ah, they're going to get arrested again. And, uh, and the cop, the cop leans out of his car and goes, where are you guys, where are you marching? And the guy like kind of rolls his eyes and he goes, well, up the street, up that street and then down to that street. And he goes, Okay, I'm your escort. And he like hops at the front of their parade and that's the end uh, of the story. Like and you're supposed jumps, to jump jumping in front of the yeah, parade, literally. Yeah. <laughs> like and you're really supposed to walk away from this feeling. I'm pretty sure you're supposed to walk away from this feeling like, oh, the cops learned a lesson. And I I would just be I would be like, No, we don't need an escort. Thanks, man. Right. But no thanks. Yeah, yeah. You know, it literally nah, you're, you're imposing, man. It's like Co- why do cops you need- are never like cops are never like, oh sorry, I don't mean to impose. No. I'm just <laughs> gonna like, jump in front of I'm the gonna, line. I'm gonna literally jump in front of your parade and yes, make it look yes. like it's mine, you know? Wow. Dick yeah. move, cop. Dick, dick move. move. Cop. Yeah. I guess it was a dick move to go to police academy. And it was a dick move to graduate police academy and put on the badge and gun. So At least at least Pete, Pete Ayer went to police academy, but he wised up halfway through it and dropped out. I commend him for that. Yes, yes. Badass yeah. move. Congratulations. Yeah. Yep. And uh, you were also mugged in New Orleans? I never yeah. got it that bad, man. Like, like, after this mugging, did you go get a gun? This is pre-gun? No. I think... You might have told me a little it's bit pre-gun. about this before. It's pre-gun. How'd you feel? Did you feel violated? I don't think a gun would have helped me. Um, I was yeah. somewhere I shouldn't have been. I got lost. I was walking with a friend, and I was walking Saturday night at two in the morning through the projects in the in the third mm-hmm. ward, ninth ward, ninth ward, which is like cops don't even go to the ninth ward, man. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was lost, and we took a shortcut and. Um, Giant black dude walked you, over you me. Did, you I've didn't have a ghetto story. pass. I've told yeah, the story. Yeah. He didn't mm-hmm. have a weapon, but he had like ten of his buddies thirty feet yep, away under yep, a tree. Yep. Um, I remember. And I had a I had a knife on me, and he 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 gave it back to me. He took my money, and he gave gave the knife and my keys back to me. Like here, little man, here's your little knife. You know, it was like a two inch pocket knife. Did Did he say he was taxing you? He said, "I got to tax you, man." You no, he should have though. Heart. But um, yeah, it, you know, I mean, if I pulled out a gun and shot him. You know, his ten buddies would have shot me and or just killed me, ripped me limb for limb. You know, yeah, yeah. Which is why you need to be able to carry uh, an AK on your hip, <laughs> not not just a Glock. I mean, yeah. sometimes sixteen bullets. Sometimes you need thirty. You need thirty <laughs> out of a rifle. Yeah. So yeah, and then uh, you also wanted to tell me about soap. You were like, "Hey, you know, Doctor Bronner soap, man." And you're soap like, is, yeah, and I was I like, use it. "Yeah, man, that's that's like my favorite soap. It smells awesome. It lathers up perfect." And you know, I have like really dry skin, so if I use any soap that's not like one of these things they call a Castile soap, then my skin like dries out and gets cracked, and I bleed, and it's horrible. So I have to use stuff like Doctor Bronner's. You know what Castile soap is? Yeah, uh, apparently it's made from it's uh, based on olive oil. It's olive like olive oil and soap. lye. Yeah, ah, yeah, yeah. But uh, hell, but, man, yeah, it works. It, it neutralizes the lye and the yeah. I mean, a soap is is usually made with lye or something like right. it, um, right? Or ashes which contain lye. Uh, yeah, Doctor Bronner's Magic Soapbox is a documentary you can watch streaming on Netflix. It is amazing. Um, Dr. Bronner died a few years back, but his kids and grandkids are still running the the, uh, the company. The, yep. the soap is best known for the fact that every bottle has a 5,000-word screed about God and uh, politics on it. 
See, I usually buy the bars. I, I've seen the bottles, but uh, have I have you buy seen the, bars, the Screed, man? man? The Screed yeah, is amazing. I, although, you know, you know, I guess I haven't read it. Usually I do read like everything when I'm in the bathroom and I don't bring my laptop on the toilet with me. Uh, I'll get out and read any of the toiletries <sighs> in the bathroom, but I man, guess I never read the Dr. Bronner. It's long. It's, Am it's I missing like... out? Did, did I miss out on the one thing I didn't read? <laughs> what, what does it say? Oh, man. Um,. It's amazing. Fourth, any man raising 600 fruit trees in harmony with God's law, timing, teamwork, wisdom, power, mercy, love, can reap six million more from fruit above. Exceptions? Eternal? Absolute none. <laughs> uh, so they're, they're kind of like in a beat poet style then. Or yeah. Just add all that. I mean, it, it quotes like, you know, it rails against Stalin and like celebrates nice. Mark Spitz, the Olympian, and, uh, you know, says you can use it, the soap for birth control. Um, from <laughs> wait, 20, wait, 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 what? From, from like, 1929 to 1979, we wired our public servants over 13,000 times to help unite the whole human race in our eternal father's great all one God faith. With the eight books, great books by Thomas Paine suppressed since 1799, the realist declaration, the age of reason and the army of principles will instantly unite the whole human race in our eternal father's all great one God, all faith. Listen, children, eternal fa father, heavenly one, we are one. The trouble is, the trouble is that wrong people are always the most energetic, united, and intense. Mm. I guess I'm doing that. Dividing the hard worker <laughs> to die in self-defense. This fact alone brings Hitler's and Stalin's to power, and that fact will only change when we teach the whole human race the moral ABC of all one God faith, lightning like six billion strong, and we're all one, all one, all one. As Israel teaches since the year one. Listen, children, eternal family, eternally one. Exceptions, none. There's 5,000 words like this on the bottle of this soap. Hmm. Hmm. What the hell is an all one God faith? Uh, he believes that everyone is connected. He's also, he's an interesting mix of stuff. His parents were killed in concentration camps. He came to America when Hitler was just coming to power and told his parents, you got to come with me. This is going to get bad. And his parents are like, no, 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 we, it's going to be okay. Mm, mm. And the last he heard from his parents was like years later, he got a postcard from them that said, you were right. And he never saw his parents Ooh. again. They were killed in concentration camps. Damn, um, that's chilling. I know. You the were guy, right. You were I right. Would not, that, that is one situation where you never want to hear those words. Dr. You Bronner right. was thrown in a mental hospital for preaching like this at the University of Chicago. Like He just went onto the campus. He wasn't a student there. Just walked on the campus uh -huh. and started talking like this. Got uh -huh. thrown in a mental hospital. He's bl he's he's blind, he's anti-communist, he's pro-Zionist, and you know pro-Zionist. I'll give him that. His parents were killed in a concentration camp. I can kind of understand that, but it's like he's anti-Florida. Like there's stuff about fluoridation about how it's bad in in this rant, mm -hmm, and it's mm -hmm. been since the '70s. So you know, yeah, absolute yeah. cleanliness is godliness. Constructive, selfish, hard work saves nine lives. Self-redundant, brave. Dignity, beauty, relaxation, fun, tenacity gets it done, perfect sense of direction. Free, brave, no slave, mama's cat, ABC of love, and the inspiring swallow song uniting all one above, above. Dilute, enjoy. This soap has 18 different uses. Guaranteed pure potassium castile soap, 10% vegetarian, super mild. Oh, it contains hemp, by the way. They are the largest commercial yeah. user of hemp in America. You're listening to the Freedom Fiends Podcast. Freedom Fiends is now available for 24-7 streaming to your iPhone, Android phone, or other chromed robot turd. Click on the streaming audio link on freedomfiends.com. That's F-R-E-E-D-O-M-F-E-E-N-S dot com. Fiends. Hi, Fiends. Yo. What's, What's up, Fiend? Fiend? What's up, Fiend? Fiendin'. I'm actually getting my fix right now. I'm not feeling it. Yeah. I'm fixing. I'm Good. fixing too. Yeah. So, uh, so, yeah. 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 Welcome to Delicious Dish. <laughs> Good times. Good times. A you can't call hookers, us. A tranny hooker's letter. A tranny hooker's child's letter. To the president. How about a Christmas card from a tranny hooker's child to the president? Because there was a great Tom Waits song. It's heartbreakingly beautiful called... Uh, Christmas card from a hooker in Minneapolis. Love that song. So, what would you name it? Christmas card of a tranny. Nah, hooker I like to the yours. A, a tranny hooker's child's letter to the president. 
Okay. Okay. So I have a. You want to get out the number? I, you think everyone's playing football, watching football today, huh? We don't uh, have maybe. No one's calling in. I don't know. Yeah. No one's called. All right. Uh, but if you want to call, you still can. It's uh three zero seven two one five five one seven one. 307-215-5171. Or you can keep watching football. Whatever. We don't care. We're, we're cool to talk on our own. No worries. <laughs> well, we're a very low-pressure libertarian organization. <laughs> As opposed to all the high-pressure ones. The bow tie yeah, ones. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I wanted to clarify something. I'll probably do this again in the next three casts. In my When I was talking about the difference between the perception of the term open source and free software... Um, I know the difference. Uh, open source software is far can be far more restricted than free software in the St- in the Richard Stalin Stallman sense. Um, free software, by his meaning, means you can do whatever you want with it. You can recompile it. You can change it. You can sell it. You can give it away. You can call it. You know, do anything you want with it, as long as you attribute it and provide the source code of your new project. Um, whereas open source doesn't necessarily mean that it mean that open source if if microsoft let the world see its source code but still kept doing all of the tyrannical things they were doing they'd still they would technically be open source but what i was talking about is the perception which is when people say open source now they mean what richard stallman means by free software and when people say free software they think you don't have to pay for it right right and you i, I guess we were just <laughs> or I was just ragging on on uh, Stallman for being so obsessed with it, like this is his life's mission, when there's so many other bigger fish to fry. Yeah, and we were basically saying, yeah, everyone's wrong and you're right, but shut up about it. <laughs> because the market has decided. Uh, or not shut up about it, but you are you have a Sisyf- Sisyphean task ahead of you. you know, you're pushing that right. boulder up the right. hill, only to have it fall on you. But don't you think people would could say the same thing about us anarchists sitting there trying to teach the masses well, about anarchy? You know, which is one one way reason I kind of like the word anarchy now or market anarchist because I think I think we should stop. I want to stop using the word free for freedom. I mean, we're the freedom fiends, and we're going to keep that. But it's like free is such a distorted word. I was listening to the Lost First Fiends episode, and we even knew it then, and we we're talking about it then. It's like. Free to most people means yes, you have a right. You have a positive right. You have you have a right to a job and money and a house stolen from someone else. You know that's what free means to people. Yeah, yeah. it's the free beer. The free beer politics. Free free, free means a thousand different cereals and only uh, two different presidential candidates. Yeah, to most people. Yeah, yeah. F that. Yeah, yeah. But and I like anarchists because it doesn't even sound anything like free or freedom. It's like I don't even. I reject your premise and substitute my own. Ah, as yes. they say on Mythbusters, <laughs> that's a, that's a good one for politics. Yeah, yeah. Rejecting I, I reje- the premise, I reject your political premise and substitute my own. Yeah, yeah. I would like reject the premise. That that could be bumper stickery. I mean, withdraw your consent is good too. But I like I, I like reject the premise better. I, I feel it's it's almost more active. It's like even though they're both active, I like I like reject the premise. What do you it's think? Less likely to get you pulled over. Cops are too dumb to know what it means. Most cops. <laughs> yeah, if you yeah, put yeah, maybe. if you put remove your consent, some cops are gonna be like, I'm gonna pull you over and test that motherfucker. It, yes, I'm gonna make you consent. Mm-hmm. I will force you to consent. You, you can't I guess that's that's true too. You can't really force somebody to accept a premise. Uh you could try, but I, I think you have a lot less power uh over somebody's brain than you do over their body. Yeah, you can't force right. consent any more than you can force an apology. You can force someone to do something that looks like consent to you. Right. Oh, right. that was which, one of the which, other which things. Which in the end is, is all I think the one cops of the, care about. One of the other things in Treme was when this cop, like, came in and was messing with this dude, just like, you know, about to beat him with his club, you know, and, and arrested him. He, like, turned back to the guy as he was hauling him off to the police stick car. He stopped. Looked like he was gonna spit in the guy's face, and the cop, the cop said, the "Cop looked like he was gonna spit in his face," and he just looked at him and, like inches from his face, just said, "Respect," and then dragged him off to the cop car, which Ugh. is such horseshit. You don't, you can't make someone respect. I, I've seen a lot of like gang documentaries with interviews of gang members too, where they're mm-hmm. like that, like, "Yeah, man, we're gonna make people respect us." No, you can't make people respect you. You can make them fear you. You can even make them do what you want. But you can't make them respect you or like you mm-hmm. or, or you know no. give you consent. No, you can't. 
Although that doesn't stop people from trying. I know. I mean that, that that's what the state is built around. I mean that that's sort of one of the state's main efforts is to try to get you to respect them. Um, but I think I think you're right. Uh, at most they can force you to fear them. I don't think they can force you to respect them. Um, but I think they are successful. I mean the va- uh, I don't know if it's the vast majority, but uh, a lot of people do respect the state. Um, I think they weren't forced into it though. I think that that's something inside of them. Like we say, statism is a birth defect, right? Yeah. 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 So, um, where do you want to go from here? You want to talk about uh, foreign policy a little bit or the onion? No, but you do. Um, so let's talk about it. I do. I do. I saw uh, Benjamin Netanyahu or Bibi, as some people call him. I saw his uh, crazy speech or at least a decent portion of it to the UN. And uh, dude is like nuts. And, and he doesn't even seem to care for people's intellect anymore or seem to respect the fact that people aren't idiots. Uh, he pulls out this cartoon picture of a bomb and uh, said that this was the red line for Iran getting a nuke and drew a red line at the top. You know, Adam Curry did about an hour on this today. Did he? Yep. Okay, okay. Well, I won't but go, go too much in that go direction ahead. then because I, I thought that was ridiculous. I guess Adam's probably yeah, addressed. They, they drew a cartoon, like an Acme-style cartoon, like, you know, Roadrunner with a bomb with a, you know, yeah, yeah. It was literally that bad. That's how they're going to um, sell this war. Like the last war they sold, or the war before that, you know, what, Operation Desert Storm, or no, the invasion after 9 11. They enduring stole, they, freedom. Yeah, they Michael. sold. They, enduring sorry, fucking freedom. I'm paying for it. I should know what it's called. They <laughs> yeah. sold that with a PowerPoint presentation that it was full of misfacts, non facts. Right. Which, they which don't even, they, they, they don't use the same kind of stuff that, that but conspiracy they're just theorists. It. But they're just drawing right, right. it. Right. Now, they're, they're not even at that point anymore. You know, we always joke about the, the blurry photos with the red arrows. Uh, you know, that's how they sold the Iraq war was Colin Powell with, you know, pictures of trucks saying, well, these trucks are probably carrying WMDs. Uh, now they don't even have to have pictures that look like they were taken from a satellite. It's just a picture of a bomb and you draw a little red line and say, if Iran gets here, we blow them up. Um, but it, more than that, it was the whole premise of a speech, not just his Iran stuff that sort of made me think, wow, this is really ridiculous. Um, uh, Okay, well, I guess we'll get into it here. We've got some some commerce to go. And then in our second to last segment, I want to bring up a few more points about Benjamin Netanyahu's speech. I guess it's been done, but there, there was a different direction I wanted to take here. So go ahead and stay tuned. Yeah. You're listening to the Freedom Fiends podcast. Freedom Fiends is now available for 24-7 streaming to your iPhone, Android phone, or other chromed robot turd. Click on the streaming audio link on freedomfiends.com. That's F-R-E-E-D-O-M-F-E-E-N-S dot com. You know, uh... Listening to that Freedom Phoenix ad uh, reminded me that in Scott Beezer's new webcomic, Quantum Vibe, um, Freedom Phoenix is actually one of the news agencies, you know, 500 years in the future. Although it's spelled F E N I X. Yeah. Really? Really? Yeah. You've been digging uh, Scott's webcomic, huh? I love it. Yeah, yeah. Quantum Vibe is really good. Uh,. I also really liked Ex- Escape from Terra, which Big Head Press used to play those two, or have those two, as you could read on Big Head Press. I guess you can still read Escape from Terra, but I think they stopped updating it on there, and they're going to try to shop it out to some other people who are going to pay for it. I don't know. Or maybe it's that way with Quantum Vibe, but now there's like some kind of separation. I don't know how, how all the inside baseball works, but I really do like Scott Beezer's Quantum Vibe, and uh, I check it you know, uh, a couple times a week for the new updates. I think he updates it daily, Monday through Friday. So you have you were interrupted. <clears throat> I was by... yeah yeah the break the hard break uh, hit me hard. Um, <laughs> Go ahead. I was I was complaining about BB. Uh, you know a lot of people I guess have have ranted on about his speech. Um, Who? But a lot of people. Who's um, BB? BB Benjamin Netanyahu. That's that's his pet name. So he seems uh, less like a tyrant. I don't, that's what you call like a child. That means baby in French. Baby. Yeah. Uh, that's what everybody calls him. BB B I B I. Okay. Yeah, yeah, whatever. 
Uh, I don't know why, man. I mean, he's he's obviously not like cute Uncle Joe, Uncle St- Joe Stalin. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, that's that's a that's a good way of thinking of it. Yeah, yeah. Or Uncle Sam. He's he's BB. Or a cop um, calling you son. Son, I hate that. That happens all the time in Texas, man. Not only cops, but you know, coaches and teachers. So go ahead, talk about BB. Anyway, baby. Yeah, yeah, BB. So um, not only did he get all crazy with this this cartoon bomb and all that, but um, you know, he, he's he's a good speaker. You know, but so was Obama, so was Hitler, whatnot at at infinitum. But um, you know. He it's it's a false premise to where if you didn't know the false premise you might be taken in by his suckertude. Uh, for instance, he 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 plays out this dichotomy that's not false. He gives us a real dichotomy. I think this is going on now. Uh, but then he he gives you a false conclusion. So here here's a little quote of what he said. He said, "The forces of modernity seek a bright future in which the rights of all are protected, in which ever expanding digital library is available in the palm of every child, in which every life is sacred." The forces of medievalism seek a world in which women and minorities are subjugated, in which knowledge is suppressed, in which not life but death is glorified. And then he goes on basically to to frame the Israeli state, and uh, and I I think you know he also means the American state here as being the force of modern modernity. Now, do you see where he's wrong there? I mean, obviously. The American state, the Israeli state, aren't uh, protecting every child. They don't think every life is sacred. They don't want all the rights of everybody to be protected. I would say that they are the medieval ones, don't you think? They're the ones that, uh, you know, subjugate women and minorities. They're the ones that suppress knowledge. And they're the ones that kill everybody all the time. And uh, Michael's enjoying some kind of beverage over there, it sounds like. Things are going to get interesting. Uh, I just noticed my wife brought home a four-pack of Starbucks double-shot espresso in a can, and I just downed four or five. No, one of them. Okay. Okay. Woo! Oh, yeah. Feel the burn. Feel the burn. Oh, Ah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 So that's how little you care about what state actors do at this point. Yeah, man. Well, I want to talk about tranny hookers and crocodile and open carrying tranny hookers and junk food. Okay. Okay. Well, I just wanted to say F you status. So, I got a political. Uh, can, can, politi- can, can, can I get an F you? Yeah. I, F you. F you. I, I, I'll, right. I'll, 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 I'll see you and raise you. Uh, I have one comment about the upcoming um, debate between Obama and between Obama and Romney. The debate ah. of Romney. Ro- oh, Romney. Um, right. That Irish tyrant. Oh, Romney. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, it, the status circle jerk. I don't want to watch it because I think it's going to be like watching a schizophrenic single person argue with himself. <laughs> okay. Do you okay. remember? You, you remember? You remember the Futurama? Yes. Where yes. They have the two it's, clones. It's a clone. Yeah. It's yeah. Jack Johnson and John Jackson running against right, each other, right. and they are literally <laughs> clones of each other. Right. Right. And uh, one says, "I say your policy goes too far." No, you're, says, you're, you're one I say pers- your policy doesn't go too far enough. But the the the, the policy is a titanium tax because titanium is oh, so is important by then. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. I, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I don't know. Or the. I don't want to watch the debate. Or, or the Simpsons, where who are the the aliens, Kang and uh, Kodos? Yeah. Where, yeah, yeah. where they take over the bodies of uh, God, Bill Clinton and Bob Dole. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And yeah. they and they end up walking around holding each other's hands while giving debates. Right. And one right. of their advisors says, um, "Sir, is your, people are starting to talk about why you and your opponent are constantly holding hands." And he says, "If you, it's for exchanging long DNA strands. If you have a better way of doing it, we're open to suggestions." <laughs> yeah, that's great. Well, exchanging DNA strands does that mean they were having sex? I think it's some sort of alien sex. Oh, I don't some, know. Some kind of alien hand job uh, with a human surrogate yeah. sex. Okay, yeah. fair enough. I guess we can categorize it as that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. I, I think you're right about it just being a schizophrenic person arguing with himself. Uh, and that's the that's the premise we gotta we gotta make sure people reject, right? I mean, we gotta reject that premise. We gotta reject the Netanyahu premise. You know, um, some 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 people we know as a couple were. Uh, talking about politics, and they're like, "Well, I guess we can all just agree that Republicans and Democrats will just never get along," you know, like like cats and dogs or something. And I'm thinking 
that's BS, man. They they completely get along. Maybe, maybe the people, because it's a divide and conquer thing that the state does. Maybe the people out there might not get along. But the folks in in Congress in D.C., man, they're like patting each other on the butt in the locker room. It, it's all one big game to pull the wool over your eyes. Um, in that new episode, that the the new season of Parks and Rec, the first episode is really good. But um. They're like in Washington, D.C., and, you know, Leslie Nope is sort of gushing, and then she kind of gets sick of it. And um, she sees, like, Barbara Boxer and hangs out. And it's, I think it's the real Barbara Boxer. And then the real John McCain is on later, like, in the coat room. And and, and uh, Amy Poehler is, like, telling him to get away and, and talks about how inconsiderate he is. But she doesn't even see his face. I'm thinking, that's how much they get along, right? Like, people on completely different sides of the aisle that should hate each other and whatnot uh, on the same NBC show. And, of course, it's an NBC show because a major net- network like that is going to, uh, you know, gush whenever it's talking about the state. So, so I have something to get someone to call get in. Along. I have something to get someone to call in. Um, I have a question. I want to know anybody who uses uh, an RSS feed to download our stuff, you know, like directly to your computer or to your iTunes or whatever. I want to know if it all goes into one folder or if it goes into three folders. And I'm gonna give well, away. Uh, I'm gonna give away a set of Freedom Fiends buttons free to any anywhere in the U.S. shipping. If it's outside, if it's in Canada, you gotta pay shipping. But in U.S., free, um, free of charge to the first person that calls in and answers this question for me accurately. So you're bribing people to call in now. Well, I just want to see who's <laughs> listening. I mean, I, I can right, see right. that there are people listening. I just I, I'm wondering I, if I, I hooked something up wrong and like the phone ain't working or something. Or I, I think they just want to hear us talk. Or yeah, maybe maybe the mixer is down because yeah, that's happened no, before where we not, can't hear the people. I can phone. see it. No? I can see it. But okay. Uh, okay. But I want to know the answer to this because we, I tag the MP3s um, under grouping for the for the, for these. I put Freedom Fiends Live for the Wednesday one, which will now be on Tuesday. I put Freedom Fiends Podcast, and for the new show with Adam Curry on his network, I put. Um, the Freedom Fiends agenda. And I want to know if they all end up in one folder like I want them to, or if they end up in three different folders, which I don't want them to, which means I'm going to have to uh, change something. Well, so, I can I can tell you in iTunes, uh, they're all in one section, one folder. Freedom okay. Fiends podcast, one category. I don't know what other RSS or podcatchers are like, but uh, in iTunes, it's all one uniform thing, which is how you want it to be. Yeah. Yeah. Although the description the is number. different. Give out the number. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the number is 307 215 5171 if you want to call us. 307 215 5171. If you're listening live on, on, on September 30th, 2012. On Sunday. Yes. It is yeah. a Sunday. So they have September different descriptions, 30th. meaning what? Um. Oh, no. Those are the show notes. So, uh, yeah. Some other. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um,. The, the description is actually the show notes for that episode, or at least the first sentence of it. So that's different. That's what than I mean everyone. by that. Right. Yeah, right. That's supposed to be different. Okay. We're gonna All go right, sell so, some um, stuff here. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yo. Yo, yo, yo. Oh, man. That, that Starbucks double shot is still really starting to hit me, man. Uh, I can feel it. I don't know if yeah, I can yeah. make it. I don't know if I can make it through the rest of the show. You're going to have a heart attack. I can I can taste colors, man. <laughs> man, I wish caffeine affected me like that. No, if, 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 I'm not going to have a heart attack. If my heart starts beating too hard, I'll just take a knife and, and carve it out of me and set it on my desk <laughs> and put it back in when I'm calmer. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. I'm gonna hey, you should your, go build some shelves. I'm going to hunt you down and eat your face, man. Arr, 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 arr. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. It does reference yeah. to uh, some some vampire teamster in Chicago is threatening yeah. to kill me because uh, to eat me in my face because I said Romney and Obama are the same thing. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that, man. Yeah. Huh. Huh. I wonder what a face would taste like. <laughs> I've, had, I've, had, I've had a goat face before, and it wasn't very good, but uh, some, some of my relatives swear by it as a breakfast food. Oh, that's racist. <laughs> that's racist. No, it's true. It's true. Uh, <laughs> spe- speaking of Iranians, um, did you see that one of the one of Iran's news agencies, uh, FARS news agency, actually picked up an Onion article and published it as if it were a real article that they wrote? They like changed the date line and everything. Uh, the that's article awesome. was. 
I'm was that it, yeah 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 it's rural white americans said they would rather vote for iranian president mahmoud ahmadinejad than u.s president barack obama <laughs> <laughs> someone in china did some paper in china did an onion put an onion article up as real one time yeah yeah apparently it's happened before even in the u.s uh, well, at least according to cnn I'd say it's a good thing because, you know, it used to be news, you know, like for instance, in America, they only got stuff from the AP wire and that was it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I guess now the internet has become the AP wire. Sort of. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a good analogy. I'll, I'll buy that. <laughs> Although the AP wire still exists. Like you can do both. When I was at a news station, you had, you had the AP wire and it was kind of clunky and it was always part of your news, uh, your news producing program like easy news or whatever like not where you cut the video in but where you cut the scripts in um there'd be a little ap wire it's kind of clunky and reminded lo- you of I windows 93 I mean, and that sounds really like like we will tell you the new like the think about that like the the environment on your computer that you're supposed to use to write the news in also contains the news you're supposed to write <laughs> well i mean it's for ease of you know moving things over although really that that doesn't even hold water anymore because now you just copy and paste from anything you know, <laughs> that you need to quote yeah. but uh but yeah i mean apparently it's happened to where u.s news agencies have done this before and you know that's always a thing nowadays you're like you read something ridiculous in new york times or some other news agency and you're like wow that is so ridiculous is this the onion maybe I you know, should start I checking <laughs> like, like like google the headline and also the onion and see if it also comes up and and i've even fallen for like not that but kind of fallen for like not seeing the connection of the beauty of that um when ian started ian's been playing the onion news at the beginning of this oh, and breaks for a while r- right after fox news but sometimes then, no but then he, later just... later he started adding fox news and i was i said to dj we were listening one night and i heard that and i was like you know i mean i don't agree with fox news and it's all biased and stuff but it's kind of weird that ian's putting so, so-called real news after the onion and she's like you don't you don't get it do you and i'm like what do you mean she, he's like <laughs> he's obviously doing that intentionally to show that they're both as ridiculous that real news is, is as ridiculous as the onion and i was like oh. yeah yeah and you yeah. told me the same thing i was like i didn't get that i was like no but this is no no <laughs> no well, it's funny. well okay so so here's how you can think of the parallel so so this this onion article was saying um you know rural right americans would rather vote than mahmoud ahmadinejad than uh, barack obama uh there's actually a haaretz article i came across the other day that was saying uh republicans would rather vote for benjamin netanyahu than mitt romney because that was so true awesome. and that was true right <laughs> right and that, that's a real article well, i don't know if it's true but it's a real article from haaretz yeah uh, cause they put it behind their paywall and all that. I don't know. Maybe I should Google that and onion and see if maybe that's an onion <laughs> article too. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Or you could just, uh, you know, circumvent it all and not vote. <laughs> so the Stockholm syndrome article that I uh, altered on, uh, Wikipedia is, has it is, been altered back? No. And here's okay. what happened. I actually went further than just qualifying it to, I just removed the BDSM part, uh-huh. um, and put a valid, like, you know, um, like not supported in because remember I said I didn't when I was doing it live on the air I said like I didn't I didn't read the citations I just assumed that they're wrong because they're government <laughs> um, I actually went and read them and there was nothing uh-huh. about BDSM in any of those three citations well one Good. of them was so you just down. deleted the BDSM from the wiki page yeah and nice. what happened that's interesting right after that like hours later somebody vandalized the whole page like not making fun of BDSM oh. or hmm. Stockholm syndrome but like changed the name of the, the page to Tourette's syndrome and said like, you know, mm. Stockholm's Tourette's syndrome is where dumb politicians go up and put their foot in their mouth and say shit. They shouldn't say shit, shit, fuck, fuck, shit, shit, fuck. And, uh, oh. you know, it was immediately reverted to my edit of it. So it kind of puts a buffer between anybody going and going, Oh, well, there's nothing encyclopedic about what I, you know, like questioning the encyclopedicness of what I did. Right, right. And it wasn't right. me. It wasn't me using a VPN. You can't actually edit Wikipedia using a VPN. I tried it by accident. I was on my VPN and it said uh, what, what did it did it do? I was even logged in and it said um th- this is a a known VPN IP address. Um oh. those can't be huh. used to edit Wikipedia. Which is huh. interesting because I can see why they do that to prevent vandalism, but wouldn't that also keep like people from you know in it Iran could have some China. chilling effects yeah, yeah yeah it could definitely have some chilling effect yeah like people who <laughs> want to contribute to it but are in a country where they could be right. you know killed for doing it yeah i mean that is a tough tightrope to walk and i don't know what their internal decision making was on that um 
But I, I, I mean, I like Wikipedia and I trust them in general. So, yeah. I mean, I don't know if there's anything untowards on them doing that. Yeah. But I could be wrong. Could be wrong. I, don't, I like them and I trust them, even though they took down my article. But, you know, if there's somebody who wanted to put it back, someone actually wrote a complete article on me in the sandbox, which is like the, it doesn't show on the site. Uh, after that and researched it and updated it. But the only person that could put that back is an experienced Wikipedia editor with many positive edits, you know? So I don't know if we have any of those in our listeners and I wouldn't call for anyone to do so because that would be against the principle of Wikipedia. Mm, you, mm-hmm. you coughed well, and didn't mute. Oh, yeah, my bad. I guess the compressor amplifies that now. So <laughs> my bad, my it. bad. I could always hear it though. Dude, you have some yeah. rack mount equipment. Do you have any other rack mount equipment? Well, uh, somebody on Facebook corrected me. It is a rack mount piece of equipment, but it's shelf mounted now. <laughs> I built the shelf uh, when I got it, and well, I posted it on Facebook. And they're it's, like, ah, it's more of a it shelf is, mount. It is a rack. It's a piece of rack mount. It's one rack space high. Rack right, is right. Uh, rack. Rack mount is. Uh, they're all the same depth and width. Uh, they're standardized then, so that you then, can put yeah. them in a standard rack. And, the, and then they're in different heights, like one one unit high, one and a half units right. high, two units high. Three yeah. units high, you know, five units yeah, high. I, I know that through virtual reality vis-a-vis using Reason, which has a graphic <laughs> user interface that, that is, is literally a rack. Yeah. And so you stack things up in the rack. And so, yeah, I mean, uh, I know I know exactly what... I know uh, that from my the, computer faking of that. Yes. Exactly, exactly. But it, it, it's so much nicer to have it, uh, you know... Uh, copied in a digital form than have to have a room full of racks and rack mounted equipment although there's there's a few things that rack mount equipment or you know hardware will do that software still won't do and on the fly compression is one of them won't you you could do it with software but it will not sound as good you can hear it working it's artifacty right right well i mean that's why you gave me this is because uh you know the, the audio software i have I mean, I guess I could tweak it to maybe do it on the fly, but it'd be yeah. a lot of work. Um, well, tube and, modeling, and, and, too. Tube modeling, which that does for the preamp, mm-hmm. uh, you can do with software, but it doesn't get it right. There's so okay. much like voodoo in the science of the you know, yeah. imperfection of the analog way of doing things that it's part of the beauty of it. Right, right, right. So I guess for now, um, at least, you know, I'm sure software will progress eventually and, you know, make this stuff more outdated than it is but uh for live applications man this thing you gave me is is excellent excellent glad you like it you know if the yeah. government wanted was was like trying to stimulate software sales uh they would probably outlaw using hardware for things ugh <laughs> yeah that sounds like something they would do <laughs> uh, job stimulus plan we're going to outlaw yeah, yeah. a sector of the market Right, right. Completely ignoring that the market's going in that direction anyway, and that if the market should go in that direction, it will, and if it shouldn't, it won't. I know. That's like kind of like the the light bulb thing, man, which really is just, oh, yeah, you know, GE. Yeah. That's just GE. Having a new yeah. patent, but it's like, it, I really think that in five or ten years anyway, no one would be using incandescent lights anyways, because the, the LEDs would catch up, and the fluorescents would catch up. They're just not there yet. Right, right. I mean, because LEDs are nice. They're just uh, expensive, and uh, especially for the same am- amount of light that they could provide. Um, yeah. I mean, as far as I know. Yep. Um, but yeah, I You're mean, all- as far as the in-between step that the government tries to force us into, man, those little curly things, they suck. Like, they're not bright. They take forever to warm up. If you if break, you break one, them, you have to, fi- you have to call to the EPA. It. Well, it's a jobs creation program, because then you got to call the EP. No, an EPA certified cleanup crew. Ah, whatever. Whatever. Hey, you know what? Uh huh. We're what? done talking until uh, huh. Tuesday. Okay. That's. Cool. I want to thank everyone who called in today and uh, <laughs> Bel- <laughs> Sally O'Donnell, the winner of our buttons. If you missed Yay. it and you're out of the room, okay, Sally, email me your address and I'll uh, send someone over to stalk you. Yeah. Yeah. Worms. All right. Yeah. Last night I had this dream, right, that I was in the Oakland Coliseum. And there were all these people screaming my name, and they were like playing a thousand dollars to see us. And that's how I knew it was a dream. My mom smokes pot. Yeah, but you don't know how to play that. I can try. Every night, my mom's gonna fly, falls asleep.
saying the freedom fiends are the one true path to anarchist liberation, but it's a good one. If you want to put your voluntarist money where your mouth is, consider making a donation to the freedom fiends. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the spinning coin on any post. Then make a one-time gift via PayPal or set up a monthly contribution of as little as $3. Giving to the freedom fiends helps advance education of horizontal liberation throughout the world. The freedom fiends, we work hard, so send us some money.